Hello friends, welcome back to Circuit Loop. I am Roshni and today's session is based on power factor. Here we will discuss the basic definition of power factor and we'll see how it is calculated. So let's get started. Friends, power factor abbreviated as PF is defined as the ratio of working power that is the true power to the apparent power or total power of the system. Power factor is a dimensionless property of AC electrical systems. Thus, it is expressed as the ratio of true power to the total power. In DC circuits, the power of the circuit is determined by finding the product of readings of voltmeter and emitter. But in AC circuits, such multiplication provides apparent power that is the total power and not the actually used power. The reason for the same is that AC circuits do not solely utilize the totally supplied power to the circuit and the power which the circuit actually utilizes is called the true power. Guys it is said that power factor expresses the energy efficiency of the system and is generally represented in the form of percentage. So basically lower the percentage less efficient power usage of the system will be. Now you must be thinking what are the units of true power and total power. So the working or true power of the system is measured in kilowatts while apparent or total power of the system is measured in kilovolt amperes. The apparent power corresponds to the power demanded by the system to perform the operation while true power corresponds to the power which is actually utilized by the system to generate the required output. Let us have some more explanation on the same. So consider the example shown here. Here we are having a glass filled with cold drink. The quantity of this whole glass represents the overall power or total power demanded by the system. This corresponds to the power which the source have actually supplied to the system. We can clearly see over here that some part of the glass is filled with cold drink while some part is filled with froth. This cold drink part of the glass represents the useful power or we can say that for a system it is the energy that is doing work. This means the part which is actually required by the system. This is called the active power of the system. Coming to the froth part, so basically it is useless and it corresponds to the power which is wasted or lost. Basically in any system, this particular power is the one which is responsible for the production of heat or vibration but it is not responsible for doing any significant operation. It is known as reactive power of the system. If a circuit is 100% efficient, then the demanded power will be equivalent to the utilized power. Let us now proceed to understand how power factor in a system is calculated. To understand the same, consider the power triangle shown here. We know that for any system, the three major classifications of power are demanded, utilized and wasted powers. The demanded power is the total power which is represented by the hypotenuse of this particular power triangle and is given the name apparent power represented by S. The base of this power triangle represents the true power or active power of the system that is the power which the system has actually utilized in doing the operation. It is given the name real power and represented by capital P. Lastly, the perpendicular side represents the wasted power of the system in the form of heat or vibrations. It is given the name reactive power and represented by capital Q. Thus the expression for power factor can be written as cosine angle phi is equals to real power P upon apparent power S. This means in case of power triangle a comparison is made between actually consumed power that is the real power and the demanded power that is the apparent power of the system. Guys, an efficient use of power in the system give rise to poor power factor. Poor power factor means that there will be more reactive power that will cause heat damage to the circuit components or may reduce the overall useful power and somewhat increase the equipment sizes. Guys, there is a classification of power factor as we can have three types of power factor, unity power factor, leading power factor and lagging power factor. This classification of power factor is dependent on the type of load that the electrical system or circuit contains. Generally we have three types of load namely inductive, resistive and capacitive. Now the question arises how the value of power factor varies according to the type of load present in the circuit. So let's proceed to understand the same but before that you must note here that in general the value of power factor lies between minus 1 to plus 1. 
let us first see purely resistive type of load that exhibit unity power factor here in this case the waveform of both voltage and current are in same phase that is their waveforms cross zero at the same instant of time we know that cos phi represents the power factor of the system and as there is no phase difference between voltage and current in case of resistive load so the value of phi will be zero for this particular case and we know that cos zero is equals to one hence we can say that power factor for a purely resistive load will be unity now next coming to purely inductive load which says that power factor exists between zero and one for this particular case guys what happens here is the voltage and current waveforms are not in same phase over here the reason for this is that there is a property of inductor that it opposes sudden change of current thus current lags the voltage in this case for a purely inductive load it is said that current lags the voltage by 90 degree hence cos of phi for this particular case will be cos 90 whose value will be equals to 0 however practically this zero value is not possible as some resistance of the motor will be there due to this reason it is said that the power factor for a purely inductive load lies between 0 and 1 moving further if we talk about capacitive load then for this particular case it is said that power factor lies between minus 1 to 0 for capacitive load it is said that the current leads the voltage by 90 degree thus it produces leading power factor since if we consider cos of 90 again then we will have zero but practically again this is not possible and also capacitive load does not exist thus it is assumed that the value of power factor for capacitive load lies between minus 1 and 0 hence we can conclude that purely resistive load will provide unity power factor purely inductive load will provide lagging power factor and purely capacitive load will give rise to leading power factor guys it is to be noted here that both leading as well as lagging power factor create loss in the system if the power factor is less than unity then the wiring in the circuit will comparatively needs to carry more current with zero reactance to deliver similar power to the resistive load guys generally electrical system exhibits lagging power factor and capacitors are used to maintain it unity well guys this is all for now i hope this lesson turns out to be a useful one to you so please like share and subscribe also press the bell icon to never miss any updates from us please put on your valuable comments below i'll be back with another interesting topic till then take good care of yourself bye bye